fantastic. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome, everyone, to the Chanel in the City live podcast show with Countess Luann and friends. What a beautiful crowd. What a great turnout. Uh, I did not expect this, and we all know that you're not here for me. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you. Um, but in all seriousness, I'm so excited for this show tonight. We have a comedy show for good causes. We have great guests tonight. And I want to thank you guys so much for supporting Stomp Out Bullying and the Fortune Society. <laughs> to all the girls that have been incarcerated and picked their, uh, changed their lives. Speaking about incarcerated, uh, someone who's been incarcerated and bullied, please welcome my co-host, my good friend, the legendary Countess Luann De La Sep. Feeling Giovanni. I want you all to dance, come on. Feeling Giovanni. I want you all to get up and dance, come on. Feeling Giovanni. Woo! And it feels so good. Yay! Statement necklace, reckless flair. You can't take me anywhere. Crowds of people stop and stare. Paparazzi on. Thank you guys. So nice to be here tonight. What a great crowd. I love the energy, man. Woo! So good. So, so, Lou, can I call you Lou? Well, of course you can call me Lou. You're my friend. Well, uh, I can't call you the Countess? You know, some people don't think I should be called the Countess. It's my divorce. Well, that's... Well, that's some bullshit because that's bullying, right? At its finest, right? That's and you what can I'm do saying. whatever you want. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Because you're the countess. I can call myself whatever I want. You're right. So we're here today for two great causes: stomp out bullying and Fortune Society. We've both been bullied. That's how we bonded. Yes. Lou came on my podcast, Chanel in the City. She opened fell in up. love. Fell in love, and I fell in love. By the way, stay tuned because Countess and Friends will be having a podcast yes. in the fall. What a great crowd. What a great, a great crowd. crowd. Love these guys. I love this venue. Yes. Now, bullying is something dear to my, me and Luann's heart. Uh, I've been through it. You've been through it. Listen, I'm a 34-year-old Jewish woman from Long Island. So we all know I've been bullied since birth, okay? And I had six brothers and sisters, so I've been bullied forever, too. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. some friends. And Yeah, well, We've yeah. been through it. Oh, sure. We all know what bullying is, right? And it's yeah. not, it's never good. Never good. A, and friend, I, a friend was just telling me that somebody sent her a text message. Oh, and here's a juicy the text story. message said, you are the ugliest girl tonight at the party. Oh. Can you imagine who would send such a thing? That is not nice. It's not nice. That's downright bullying and cyberbullying and all the, you know, and horrible that, things that people say that they don't realize affect so many people, you know? And that's why we're here tonight, because stomp out bullying, which is dear and near to mine and your heart, is really something about young kids and giving them a safe place about bullying, if they feel bullying, if they feel like they want to commit suicide. I know I didn't have it, so this is an organization that's here for us, that gives our teens and our children a safe space, and we need to have this conversation. Yeah, thank God you chose the podcast instead of killing yourself, really. Yes, exactly, right? Because right? I almost Good choice. killed myself. <laughs> Good choice. Um, well, without so, further ado. So the Fortune Society, I'm you know, delighted to be here. The ladies are here tonight. <laughs> Woo! You know, they help women get their lives back after incarceration help build them in, um, in their societies to be su successful. And, you know, they, they give women power, they um, empower, and they, uh, they build instead of 
They build people instead of building prisons. Woo! You know, and um, so it's, you know, I'm, del I'm honored to have you ladies here tonight, and I'm so proud to be a part of, of, of the organization. So, and if you want to find out more information, you just go to... Um, FortuneSociety.org. FortuneSociety.org, exactly. And StopOutBullying.org. So, and StopOutBullying.org, and get all that information. And like Luann has said... We want to build people up, not bring them down, and that's how the two charities have um, to do with each other. Luann, you've been through a lot of bullying. Oh, I've been through a lot in the last couple of years, you know. I've been uh, married, divorced, and, uh, oh, arrested. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Whoopsie. And, um, you know, I've, I've been keeping a diary all this time, so I thought I'd share a little diary entry with you. Would you guys like to hear it? Yes, we want to hear it. I made this myself. I glued them all on by myself. Beautiful, right? May 16th, 2019. Dear Diary, I shot myself in the foot being truthful about having two Bellinis on Easter Sunday. I was in Chicago. I should have totally lied and said that I didn't know that there was alcohol in them at the buffet. <laughs> it's no joke. They almost put me in jail because of it. I've only got four months left on probation, and now I have to blow in a device that detects alcohol five times a day. And if you include my boyfriend, that makes six. But, um, tsh I have to take a pill that makes me violently ill if I drink. I said, I don't need it. Haven't you seen some of my friends? <laughs> no names, okay, no names. They actually wanted me to wear an ankle bracelet. <laughs> I'm like, Giovanni doesn't make them. But I'm in talks with making a line for them right now. They also said that I have to talk to my psychiatrist every week for at least four months. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Now he needs to live with me. Forget about it. So thank you for being supportive tonight. You guys for coming. Woo! My friends are here. I love you guys. Shout out to supportive friends. And, and my girls over here. Woo! I got to say, Lou, you've taught us, you taught me to face the bullies and to never care about what people think. And I, because of you, I had the guts to go forward with the podcast because you helped these women feel the same way. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you. You're, you know, you and your aunt are bullying. And Countess Luann so helped I just want to say, something. I want to thank my girlfriends, and I want to set the record straight with you guys, okay? I never fucked the pirate. So please welcome to the stage, Jacques Azoulay! <laughs> The party scene adventures. Uh, uh. You mean the the pirate couldn't raise his flag? <laughs> what? The pirate couldn't raise his flag? <laughs> no, he did raise his flag, but he raised it for Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Not a real French pirate, I tell you that. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, this is a great cause, you know. I, I, as an immigrant, fresh off the boat, I, I was bullied early on. Started with my name, you know. My name is Jacques. Not Jake, not Jack. Jacques. J-A-C-Q-U-E-S. But you don't pronounce the S at the end. Jackus. Jackus? <laughs> so that started something, you know. And I have to tell you, it's hard to be a Frenchman in America. I mean, we have a terrible reputation. You know, I hear it again and again. You guys, you are pretentious, you are arrogant, you're snobs. I hear it again and again enough. Put yourself in my shoes. Gently, please. You will know it, but these are nice shoes. <laughs> you know, and the other thing is, why in the world, why in the world are we the scapegoat for bad language? Earlier today, a guy says, hey, this son of a bitch, motherfucker, pardon my French. I'm like, Hello. <laughs> And, That's not good. I hate and that. And the hate 
Change the culture. Yes, Tampa Bullying. Woo! Hey, change the culture. That's their slogan. Okay. Make America love again, please. Yes, yes. Listen, um, I tell you what. I forgot what I was going to tell you. But... Um, you want to call some... Friends no, 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 not uh, yet. No, 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 no. Do you want so, me to remind so, you? No, 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 oh, no, I'm fine with <laughs> I've that. I've got notes so, in your back pocket. So, you know, no, no. So, uh, uh, no, I wanted to make sure that you understand what I'm saying, you know, because it's not the case with my accent everywhere. For example, my fiance, her family is from Texas, you know, near El Paso. <laughs> and uh, a place that actually was renamed No Paso recently. I don't know if you followed that. But, uh, you know, when I go down there, meaning to Texas, they don't understand the word I'm saying. It's, it's terrible, and I'm glad you, you seem to be understanding what I'm saying. So the reputation of the French is also, you know, I hear about it when you guys, you love to go to France, you go to Provence, you go to Paris. The Eiffel Tower was fantastic. Everything was beautiful, Provence. But the French, they're horrible people. They don't speak English. They pretend not to speak the language. They are so rude. Point taken, people. We are grumpy, but you have to understand we've been constantly invaded by the Romans, the Arabs, the British, more recently the Germans. So for us, it's hard to dissociate invasion and tourism. To be nasty to a tourist is like an act of resistance. <laughs> You've been to France, you know French people are, are good people. And I tell French people, my dear fellows, if you want to be integrated and not be bullied, you have to focus on the kindness. <laughs> focus on the goodness, you know? Me, myself, I'm trying to be uh, a good person. I'm at my small level, all things considered, I'm changing the world. I became a vegetarian. It's good for the environment. I use less water. You know, French people don't shower that much. I'm definitely using less plastic. I never, never pick up after my dog. <laughs> and when possible, but only when possible, I'm reusing condoms. <laughs> Focused on the goodness. It will help, you know, it will help end bullying if you're good, right? Yes. Yes, right, guys? <laughs> oh! But you know what else? You know what else helps tremendously to be integrated? You know, people want to be near optimistic people. And Lou, you know, huh, that's the most optimistic person. Woo! You're right. Always, you I'm know, always seeing the glass three quarter full. But you know me too, I'm the quintessential optimist. Always. The other day guys come and they say, Jacques, things couldn't get any worse. I'm like, of course they can. Always on the up. You know, we were talking with friends recently and uh, people say, Jacques, you don't understand, it's terrible. Sonia, I'm sorry to bother you, I'm on stage. Sorry. Sorry. I love you. Oh. oh. I'm bullying Sonia. Bully Sonia. You know, the other day some people were talking to me. Sonia, said, are you, you going to take that? It's not. <laughs> As I was saying, some people were saying, you know, Jacques, it's terrible. This guy only has a few months to live. And I'm like, okay, but maybe it will be July and August. Always seeing the positive in people. And that's very important. You know, you want to be near that guy. Imagine you've just taken off. After 10 minutes in the plane, you hear a loud noise on the left side of the aircraft and you see this black smoke. And suddenly, this is your captain speaking. We lost one engine. <laughs> We lost both engines. And everybody is like, wow, we're all going to, we're never going to survive this. I'm like, no, no, no. You're only saying that because no one ever has. You know, you have to be optimistic. And <laughs> <laughs> this is very important. And um, you know what else? I tell you what. Against bullying, if optimism is not enough, and if goodwill is not enough, I didn't come empty-handed tonight. I have a couple of uh, options for you to take. And this is important. I want to be supportive for people who suffer from bullying. So the first thing is there is this new pill. I don't know if you heard about it. 
It's a uh, this pill. You see this pill? Yes. You There's can no say pill. no. It's working already. <laughs> it's a pill. You take it, and it makes you invisible. If you don't believe me, you can just ask my friend Michael. <laughs> invisible friend. I wish. I wish I had. I wish I had that pill many times in my life. But Luan, I didn't tell you. But I also have something very important. I've created a martial art for French people, and I'm touring the country to teach kids UFFCT, Woo! Ultimate French Fighting Combat Technique. <laughs> the Israelis have Krav Maga. The Brazilians have Capoeira. We have the UFFCT, UFST. And it's a mix, it's a mix of Warf very advanced warfare psychological technique and French can can. Would you like to see a demonstration? Yes. Woo! Yes, we want. I'm going to need three volunteers. Strong men. Three volunteers. Wait, women or men? Men. Really? Women are too nice to be bullied. Oh. I okay, need three we need volunteers. three guys. Three men. Don't discriminate. Asia. I apologize, you can be a bully too. <laughs> I need three strong men to come on stage. Come on, Kat, with me you right look like now. a man in that hat. Get up here. Who wants to volunteer? Who wants to come and be with me? Come, please. Come on. Come. She, oh, this is I good love education. It. Okay, two. Here we go. Come. That's two. You want to come too? All right, come. Yes, let's, get, let's give a round of applause. A round of applause. All yeah. right. Oh, we got a big, handsome guy, too. We very got good, lots of good. handsome people here. You All are right. Here. You are going to be, what's your name? Drew, nice to meet you. David, Sorry. pleasure. Jacqueline, you're way too nice to be a bully. We're going to have to work on, the, on some active skill. We're going we're gonna to need to go over here. We're gonna need to, you guys come here. I'm sorry, I have to move that. We're improvising Do you think? I got home. Okay. All right. The three of you are bullies. Have you had any experience in... Uh, I'm going to take that from your hand because it can be dangerous. Have you had any experience in martial art training before? You have. You're going to be the, the, the bully, I think. And the two of you, zero? Okay, so you're just going to pose, okay? We're gonna, you two are going to back, back up the main bully. You're going to be behind and I want you to take a mean face, you know, like... Like you've been constipated for three weeks and you're ah, mean, you're angry, you know? You too, ah, it's hard for you because you're so nice. Look at your son, Jacqueline's so nice. Ah, da, da. And you, you come with me here because otherwise we're going to fall. And you support him, you're behind. And you, you are the bully and I'm a French schoolboy. I'm 12 years old. Guys, this is very important. You have to, ah, mean, mean, mean. And you are, no, no, you're, you're, you're here. You're bullying me with him. And I'm a French schoolboy. I'm 12 years old. And you want to take the homemade good lunch that my mother made for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here you are. You're going to say, give me your nice, your delicious homemade lunch that your French maman made for you. Give me your nice homemade lunch that your French mom gave to you. Woo! Okay, but because you're a bully, you're making fun of my accent. So you're going to say the same thing with a French accent. Give me your nice uh, homemade lunch that your mother gave to you. Okay. And then I want you to look very menacing with your, with your elbow. In a, you know, you're like attacking me. You know, you want my lunch. Stay like that. You are not bullying me at all. You're, you're fired as a bully. I'm going to, c'est pas possible. You have to look mean. You're here. No, you're not sitting here. You're part. This is like making a movie. This is like Bollywood. <laughs> this is Bollywood, Bully people. We're making Bully a movie, okay? <laughs> okay, so you're ready? You're in, you're in place? Okay, okay. It's right. not Hollywood, it's huh? Bollywood. It's Bollywood. Okay, so you're here. But stay like that. Keep the pose, okay? Don't stay, stay like that. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, the nice lunch homemade by my maman, she's here tonight. Woo! My maman is here tonight. Just everybody, mom. everybody, uh, you know, her English is not great. I still remember Christmas 1984, and I don't like the way you cook the chicken, but it's okay. We'll talk about that later. Uh, all right. So you, you're going you're gonna to bully me like that? Huh? You ready? Okay. And remember, huh? so it's, it's UFS technique. The first part of UFS, it's a French martial art. It's surrender. So you're mean. You're, you're, 
give me your nice homemade lunch that your French mother gave to you. I'm here, I'm surrendering. Step one. Step two, remember, I'm a French schoolboy. I'm 12 years old. I didn't brush my teeth in weeks. <laughs> I had charcuterie last night and old runny cheese this morning. <laughs> and I'm a heavy smoker. Step two. You back up. And step three, French cancan. Et voilà. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a demonstration of oeufs. <laughs> because sometimes you have to stand up for yourself. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, take your drink. You're going to need it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank C2? you so much. Huh? C2? Is that the end of the bullying? Oh, but that's it. That's, uh, that's, it? that's what I wanted well, to do for you. Well, let's give a round of applause for Jacques Woo! and his anti-bullying campaign. Thank you. Demonstrating bullying. All right. So we have, uh, who's up next? Well, she is more <laughs> than just Andy Cohen's assistant. She hosts the popular true crime podcast, Martinis and Murders, one of my favorites, Unplugged, and her new Bustle series, Unexpert, and has been in three auto trader commercials. Okay? Please welcome the fabulous Darren Carr. Yeah. Jacques and Darren. Yeah, it's the I want some Jacques and Darren. Right. Yeah, so, okay. Darren, after that bullying story, yeah. I'm sure you got a hell of a bullying story, I right? I do, actually. Yeah, I mean, I'm, look, I'm fortunate enough to not have experienced a ton of bullying growing up. I grew in a pretty accepting environment, which was very lovely. My parents are very lovely and progressive and all the, all the right things that you should be. Um, and when I came out which was when I was about 19, I had a fairly decent, easy time. Again, parents accepting, friends accepting, um, and I had a few girlfriends, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then I started, a, I got set up, I had just broken up, someone had just broken my heart, and I got set up on a blind date with a bartender and an actress, Ooh. never again, <laughs> and uh, we met. She was lovely. Her name was Evan, which happens to be my brother's name, so it was very uncomfortable <laughs> for me for a little while. We dated. We sort of fell in love. She was a Alabama Southern Baptist, and which, no shade there, but n wasn't out. Um, she wasn't out to her family, and I was sort of her first um, love of her life, and I grew up in Montclair, New Jersey, a very progressive place to grow up. And I thought I was kind of capable of being able to handle someone's first sort of coming out. And first time, I thought it would be a pretty good mentor, but also a girlfriend. And uh, it was, I dated her for maybe like five months. We just said, I love you. And she was like, I'm going home to Alabama for Christmas. And I'm going to come out for you, for us, you know. Uh, I said, great. And she was like, I'm flying home. She kissed me goodbye. She flew home to Alabama. I went to work that day. I went to, we had a live show for Watch What Happens Live. And I was handing out the staff Christmas gifts that Andy has gotten us over the years. And I got a call from Evan. And I picked up and I said, you know, I was like, hey, babe, what's going on? And she said, is this Darren? And I said, yes. And she said, this is Evan's mother. And I was pretty excited because I thought, all right. Like, she came out. She wants to meet me. We can have a relationship. This is very important. You know, she fell in love. You okay, Luann? Sorry, oh, guys, this is really important. Sticker? Can we just... This is um, a very important sorry, part. Sorry, Darla. Oh, no, I, sorry, I, I, that's okay. It's very important. Um, and uh, she said... So I said, oh, my gosh, so nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you. I'm very excited to talk to you. And she said, um, you, are you the faggot that's been hanging out with my daughter? And I said, uh-huh. This was at work. So I, like, immediately went outside. I didn't want anyone knowing that I was, like, you know, at work. I've never cried at work. I've been with Andy for almost 10 years. We're very, it's very fun in my environment. Um, no bullying in my environment. And I said, uh-huh. And she said, well, I don't know what Evan told you, but I have a shotgun. 
and I will come to where you live, which Evan will tell me, and I will take that shotgun, and I will ram it down your faggot throat, and I will blow your fucking head off. Pardon my French. <laughs> yeah, that was... It. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's bullying. I mean, like, I sort of, when I, when I colloquially say it in the lexicon of life, I mostly talk about it as kind of like a hate crime, even though it, you know, I mean, my life was threatened, but thank God there was distance. And I said, I mean, this is still how, like, positive I am as a person. I was just like, I think you're underestimating the happiness that I bring to your daughter's life. And I think that you should listen to your daughter. And uh, she Guys, said... Guys, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's cool. Uh, she said, you know, like, I don't associate with queers. Queers don't deserve to live. Um, if you ever talk to my daughter again, I will fucking kill you. And then I heard Evan in the background crying. And she made Evan come on the phone and say that she would chose her mother over me, which made sense. I get that. I understand that. I probably would choose my mother over any person I've ever dated. Um, but not in that way. And I said, okay. And, uh... I've never spoken to her since, and it's been five years. But the important thing about the story is that three weeks later, I met the love of my life, and we've been dating for five years. Woo! Hello. And one thing I want to say is that Darren Carp... I'm sorry I couldn't make that funny. No, it's not about... So I just want to make this um, clear that... When I say comedy, it's just in light fun, but there's also some serious stories, and it's just very important to have this conversation. What Lou's been through, what Darren's been through, what I've been through, what Jock's been through, because if we don't have this conversation, what Darren just shared with us, then we're gonna let people like Evan, is that? It's really Evan's mom. Evan's mom, get away with it. And are we gonna let her get away with it? No. I wanna hear this. Are we gonna let people like that get away with it? I like right, this. Yeah. because Darren is a beautiful human being and a beautiful person, and that's what she teaches us. Thanks, yeah. thanks, babe. We'll make it right, right, thanks, Jorinda? Jorinda? We'll, we'll <laughs> make it nice. We'll make, we'll it, make nice. it nice, we'll make it right. <laughs> Fortunately, my life is very nice, and uh, I have a good life, and it's really Evan who was the victim as well, because she, yeah. right. I could go yeah. back to my life with a cool boss and a cool job and cool friends, right. yeah. and she had to go back to a parent who didn't love her enough to let her be who she was, and that's. Are sucks. you still in contact with her? I've never spoken to her since. I've tried. I reached out. She blocked me on everything. Really? And uh, as far as I know, she lives in Alabama. Never spoken to her since. Wow. So that's her mom tough. bullied her and bullied you. Exactly. Basically. It's a generational yeah. thing, I guess. But yeah, that's my Thank story. Thank you for sharing. Thank you're you're for welcome. That was for really cool. Darren. Thank you please so much. Give it up for Darren. Darren. Everybody, give it up Darren for sharing her story. Follow Darren Carp at Carp Darren. And thank you, Jacques Azoulay, for your b lunchbox bullying. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> and the poulet. And the poulet. Well done. So. And then who, we have Jacques. You have. You, you guys. Okay. okay. I guess I didn't do the story. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. So we have. Oh, I can't see. She needs her glasses. Sorry. You know who's up next? She's a writer, a comedian, and an actor. She can be seen on JFL. Betches and more. You can hear her on the weekly podcast, No Such Thing as Love with Claire Burns. She's also considered herself an artist and Instagram uh, medium. Mm -hmm. What? Her medium? What? Yes. Please welcome the talented Jesse Joles. Jollis. Jollis. Jesse Joles. Sorry I pronounced that wrong, darling. I didn't mean to. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> hey, Jesse. Hi. Thank you for just uttering my name. That was. <laughs> I also tripped Sorry, on the way up in sneakers, so that's the exciting. Hell was that? Shane, do Shane, I sit here? Shane, Mike. Yes, darling. We yeah. lost a mic on the back of that one. All right, I'm coming in hot. This is real life, guys. Sorry, we're not perfect. There you go. I know it's a very small stage, but here we are. You look fabulous. Thank you for saying that. I like your dress. You look fabulous. <laughs> What's yeah. happening? Is Shane, is the mic on? I think it fell and it went off. Bullying by the sound department. That's Shane it. is bullying Thank us. You. No, just, just kidding. Thank you so much. And there's my spare just in case. There you there go. go. Oh, Shane. what a treat. Yes. How thrilling. <laughs> what a brave story. Woo! Let's give Darren, it up again one more time for Darren so Carp, too. Yeah. I'm going to bring a different energy if that's right. okay. Yes. Thank you for that. All good. We need all good. 
Good energy. Should I go straight into yeah, it? Tell sure. Us your what story. a thrill. So, <laughs> fun thing about me, um, I'm one of those people that like struggled, and my parents didn't necessarily help me, some would say. Um, in middle school, there's like one kid that everyone feels bad for, you know what I mean? And that's the kid with the rolly backpack. And that was me. Um, so thank you. We've got people raising their hands. They thank had rolly you. backpacks. Yes. Did anyone oh relate? Oh, my God. Okay, yes. okay whoever yes. had a rolly yes. backpack, yes. raise Reverend your hand. John Hart. Raise Boy, your hand. Oh, my that God. That was hard for me. I'll tell you, you really become a target, if you will, rolling through the halls. Oh, my God. Um, and I got a rolly backpack because I told my parents my half a mile walk to the bus stop was too far. And so I was like, I'm a performer. Like, I'll make them feel badly. So I tried to make them feel badly. And then my mom was like, here's a rolly backpack. Good luck. <laughs> and then I was like, this isn't working. I don't like being bullied. So I went to my parents and I was like, listen, there are cars in the morning. Like, what if I get hit? What if I die? And my mom was like, here's a reflector vest. So, <laughs> which, yeah, like construction workers wear. And you people don't know this. It actually does reflect light, attracts bullies. They can really find you so quickly. Um, and they found me. And uh, do you want me to stand? Oh, I yeah, think it'd be know, so cool. The get, girls are right. She should stand up yeah, and go come over front. Here. Oh, yeah, there we go. baby. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> if the I'm girls like, say it, I'll do it. Night. Um, I do feel weird blocking you guys. We but don't care. We like it. Thank you so much. Um, I also, in fifth grade, um, I have something called trichotillomania. What's that? So, what it is, is it's a, you know, anxiety condition, yeah, where you, it's a disorder where you pull out the hair on your head. Oh my gosh. It can be your eyebrows, it can be your eyelashes. I chose my head. I said, that's the spot I want. So... Kids were like, oh, okay, she is bald. Parents thought I had cancer. And there was a moment where I was like, you know, a certain life is being had by me. And I looked at myself as like a chubby, bald head, head kid, and I said, you better get a personality. Um, and that sort of, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Woo! Uh, thank you so much. And boy, did you get one, baby. Oh, Boy, did you get one. My God, thank you so much. <laughs> That's huge. Um, thank you. Uh, then when I was 13, uh, my house burnt down. So I lost everything I owned and was a nomad, um, which my dad is a motivational speaker. So he told my family, we're going to be the happiest family that ever went through a fire, which just sort of catapulted me into therapy as an adult. So that's been, thank you. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, babe. Very thank you, Jess. Fans. So many fans here. And uh, that's when I started doing comedy, which oh, is, boy. you know, this, a sport for people who need validation. Some would say in an arena of sadness and darkness. Um, but it is the one I chose. My parents are thrilled, disappointed. And so... <laughs> That's something that we battle with. Like and all our Jewish parents All are. the Jewish parents. And here's a hot tip. Uh, YouTube has mean comments on it. And I would recommend that you don't read them if you're doing something that you care about. But I said, caution to the wind. I'm a strong woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> you know, I've come into my own. Thank you. Yeah, Woo! baby. Thank you so much. Um, but the comments are very fire and hurtful, and one of them really stuck with me that I'll share with you right now. Somebody wrote, um, you're a female version of Harvey Weinstein. Totally unfuckable. And here's the thing. I am upset by that comment for many things. When I think of Harvey Weinstein, I don't think of his physique. I think about the fact that he's a monster. Like, no one says she's a female Hitler with the curves. Woo! So, thank you. Oh, my God. That's very Beyond. kind. Yes, thank you. And so we, we keep going. We go on. But something that I realized later in life is that I had a bully 
from when I was three uh, till when I was 30 that was with me all the time around my apartment, when I went to school, when I came home, everywhere, and that person was me. I was always my biggest bully, and even today, I mean, what I, what I hope that kids or people who are being bullied can remember is it only becomes harmful for you when you believe it. So I have a lot of Post-its around my apartment with positive affirmations. Thank Ooh. you. Yes, you yeah. do. And so I, that's what I think I've learned from bullying. And if I could tell someone that's maybe in a hard situation to just remember those people are hurting and that if we don't believe it, it doesn't have the power that maybe it could if we did, you know? Woo! Jesse so, right. Jollis in the you. building. Amazing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Guys, you can follow, what a treat. You can follow Jesse Jollis on social media, at Jesse Jollis. Yes. Oh, Jesse, just a photo. Just a photo they want to take, I guess, with all of the three of us. But no, 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 I'm doing a show. We'll do it after the show. We'll do it after the show. All right, so, and then you're going to do this. Give it up for Jesse! Yeah, baby. All right, we have two next fabulous people. She's the host of the hilarious podcast, How Come, and she's on Netflix, called, the Netflix series called Unexplained. Please welcome Remy Casimir. And then you're gonna say he's an actor. Oh, he's coming on now? Oh, so we got John Marco coming on, too. He's yeah. an actor and a comedian hey. recently featured in a movie, Hustlers. Hustlers! Oh! 3.8 billion Please dollars in the Welcome to the box. stage, the hilarious Remy Casimir and, and John Marco Soresi. Oh, I didn't know you were a duo, man. Oh, they're oh, not. Oh, I didn't know they you were a couple. They just do a lot of comedy. We are not you want to sit down and then we're going to have you do stand tonight or uh, the... Chanel put us together for, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, for the that. podcast. Well, Remy and, J and oh, I John wish Marco. Oh, out in front. Remy and anyway. John Marco, you guys do <laughs> comedy together. I'm going to... Not together, but sometimes on comedy lineups, Yes, right? we, did yeah. a, we did a college last week together. Like, I saw you on Instagram today. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Is your mic not working? I, I can't Shane, tell. the mic. <laughs> is my mic working? There it is. Okay. You guys, give it up for Stomp Out Bullying. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Let's stomp Thank out that Thank you so bullying. much for having us. I'm just going to stand because I, I'll bully sure. myself <laughs> if I sit on this stool from certain angles, you know? Please stay if you want. You want me to? Okay. Sure. That's okay. Why don't okay. you talk to us here? Ooh. It's a little awkward. All right. Hello. Hi. Is that, oh, yeah? Cool. So what's the half, Chanel? So what's the what? What's we, going on? We just traded spots. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got to hey tell guys. you what's going on. So here's Thank the we want to yeah, have ahead. each of you share your bullying story. Mm. Okay. Why don't we have Remy, you talk first, and then we'll have John Marco. He's going to share his. John Marco, do you want to sit down I while I tell my down. story? Please. Just for the shots. Thank you. Okay, hi, guys. I'm Remy Casimir. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, as Chanel said, I host the podcast, How Come? And my bullying story kind of comes from that story. So How Come is about the fact that I had never had an orgasm. I know. Some of you are shocked, and some of you are like, whoa, women can have orgasms? <laughs> yes. So at 28, I was a stand-up comic, and I was seeing all these other stand-up comedians doing their sets about orgasms they were having. They'd be like, oh yeah, I had five orgasms. And I'd go up to them after the show and I'd be like, oh my God, that story with the orgasms, like what a hilarious random number. And they'd be like, no, that's not the joke part of the joke. Like I'm really coming that much. And I'd be like, what? So I started a podcast <laughs> <laughs> to figure it out. 
It's a really good podcast. It's a really good podcast. Really good podcast. First episode went amazing. The person told me about her first time coming. She gave me an assignment. I went home to do that assignment. Second episode didn't go so well. Um, I had a couple on the podcast, and I was telling them about how I felt defective, I felt broken, I felt like I was different from everybody else who was coming left and right, it seemed. And instead of embracing me and being like, oh, this is a really serious problem, they kind of picked on me the entire time and they made fun of, they were like, well, we don't really care about telling our stories because no one's listening to this. This is like really kind of going in on me and like making fun. They're like, oh, your boyfriend must be bad at sex. He's not bad at sex. Let's give a shout out to Remy's boyfriend. He's in the audience. Oh my right? God, don't do that. Oh, <laughs> Oops, sorry. Congratulations. Ah, Congratulations. He did Congratulations. not sign up for that. He's not Thank bad God, at I sex, it. everybody. It. Give he's, it up for this guy. Yeah, he's not bad at sex, you guys. Thanks, Ben. Um, <laughs> sorry, just a shout out to Ben. But yeah, no, the point, like, I would be like, now, if they had said that to me, I've, like, learned enough to be like, how could somebody else give me an orgasm if I hadn't done it myself? You know, that's like handing somebody a Rubik's Cube and being like, Figure this out. Nobody has. And also, you're naked. <laughs> That's tough, right? Very tough, yeah. So, um, yeah, I went home after that recording. They made me feel really bad about myself. And I said to my boy, I had, like, a breakdown. I was like, I can't release this podcast. People are going to think I'm a freak. I'm, like, so different from everybody else who's, like, mature and apparently having better sex than me. Um, and that was not so. I ended up starting the podcast like four months later. Came six episodes in. Woo! All right. <laughs> and now I've had over 400 women around the world have their first orgasms because the assignments that I did on that same podcast. There All you right. go. Woo! Unity. <laughs> Unity. Thank you. And you helped other women feel less ashamed. Less ashamed, less alone. Less, less alone, less bullied. Yep. Because that is a form of bullying. Yeah, and that was the thing is when the podcast finally came out, a lot of other people who had spoken to me like as really close friends before were like, oh yeah, me too. I've never had an orgasm. Like some people that were like in my family said that. So yeah, it was we fun. bonded. We thought it was Well, I'm glad bonded. it was a me too orgasm moment and Woo! not the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jacques, you yeah. should listen to this podcast, I think. What? I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> are you bullying Jacques? It was a joke. Oh, Jacques and our old friends. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't John Marco and Jacques. Jacques. You love We're here Jacques. to stomp out bullying, okay? We have to stuff it in a locker and give yeah. it a swirly. Fuck that bullying up. Uh, that John, was great. You can, okay, thank you. <laughs> it, Your turn. Well, we're, for Remy, that was so Yeah, oh, yeah. For Remy, yeah, yeah, so Remy. good. I've listened to it. It's a great podcast. Do you listen to it? I listen to like a couple episodes, which oh, for me? a comedian, comedian to comedian, that's, that's like crazy. Love. Whoa. Um, John Marco is on everyone's podcast, yet he yeah. doesn't have his own, but. I don't have my own. Right. I'm thinking if anyone start. has any ideas, any of you guys want to co op on something. So. Hustlers, baby. Hustlers. Okay, it was a very small With part. No one get excited. <laughs> I played I played Jennifer Lopez's waiter. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah. So you know, to, to prepare for the role, I actually became a waiter for twelve years. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd tell a a bullying story. Where, By where the way, before he tells the story, the way me and John Marco met is John Marco was a fantastic reenactment actor, comedian in a show called My Crazy Love Story that I uh, participated with him. I had the honor yeah. to. Yes, and I played what, your that, hairdresser. My hairdresser, because I lied to my boyfriend in college and pretended that I was Tom Brady's hairdresser, but I really wasn't. It was my Israeli hairdresser in Boston who really was. And so, Israeli John Marco, hairdresser, I portrayed with a very strong please French do it. accent. No, not at all. Oh, you it was hard. <laughs> Meryl Streep. What did your hairdresser say? He backed me up. He didn't watch up. it. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very cool. Very cool. It's still on my reel. Uh, so, <laughs> hi. So here's my story, real quick, just so I know the room. Round of applause if you if you live in New York City. Woo! Yeah. Okay. So most of us. All right. Good. So those of you who don't, I'm sure you'll see them if you ride the subway. You know, at least the people working tonight. And uh, we have a lot of subway performers, and New Yorkers don't like them. You know, we're just trying to get to work. But there's one. There's one I really like. 
because he's a stand-up comedian. And his name is Homeless Earl. I don't think that's his actual name. Um, if it is, his parents were incredibly accurate. Uh, but the last time, last time I saw him, I was, uh, I was headed home from my weekly hip-hop class. And that's not the joke. But I was headed home, and Homeless Earl was headlining the C train. But the moment he started telling his jokes, I hope I can curse, the moment he started telling his jokes, there was like a construction worker on the other end of the train that just started screaming, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Nobody wants this. Shut the fuck up. And part of me felt very upset because, you know what, Homeless Earl, he is a funny guy. And maybe his jokes don't always work, and maybe he has room to grow, and maybe sometimes he has to perform for strange benefits called stomp out bullying, and maybe I was projecting <laughs> at this point. But when he said that, I said, hey, why don't you shut the fuck up? <laughs> and that was Woo! the first time in the history of New York City that everyone shut the fuck up. <laughs> Except for one guy in the back who shouted, world star! So funny. then this guy, the construction worker, he stands up and says, Who the You don't know what World Star is? <laughs> it's a website that people. Now, reminder, I was coming from hip hop class, okay? <laughs> this is what I was wearing a beige American apparel tank top that said, Dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> Neon blue, juicy sweatpants. And after class, I had changed into Crocs. So Woo! I was looking less intimidating than I do right now. But thank God across from me, there was this guy, there was this guy, like if CrossFit was a person, it was this guy. He was filling out his tank top a lot better than me. So I gave him this look just like, hey buddy, I am in a pickle. If shit goes down, you, you'll take care of it, right? Now this guy says, who the fuck said that? Now he's walking down the aisle. And I can help tell the way he's saying who the fuck said that. He really does not know who the fuck said that. Until this CrossFit motherfucker points directly at me. So now he's coming at me. He's like, you fucking say, you fucking say that. I got three options, right? One, I stay and fight. I have a yellow belt in Taekwondo, but I got it when I was six. <laughs> Two, I tried to find the police, but he's probably going to catch me because, again, the Crocs. Or three, across the platform. The train has not left the station. Across the platform, there's another train opposite direction. Doors still open. It's risky, but that's what I do. So this guy's coming at me. I pivot past him. I go across the platform as fast as my Crocs will let me. And then hand to God, I get on the other train. Doors close right as he reaches me. And he's just banging on the door. He's like, you, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill And I was a little cocky from hip-hop, so I was like, too slow, motherfucker. A too Ooh. slow. And that's when the doors reopened. Um, so I got punched in the face, but I think it was worth it because in the moment I stomped out yes. bullying. Yes. Give it up for John Marco Ceresi and Remy Casimir. Oh my God, you're amazing, guys. That was fun. Thank you, guys. Make sure you, you follow them? them on Instagram. You leave on the scoop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes, follow us on Instagram. Remy Please Cassidy tell them where they John can follow Marcus. you guys all. Yeah. And How Come Podcast. Thanks, guys. You're famous. Give it up. They're famous now. Woo! Love it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really careful here. All right, doll. So who do we got next? So we got uh, two wild kids out in the wild. They're two hosts. You never know what kind of adventure these two are going to bring or who they're going to bully. No, just kidding. Or who they're going to call out. Just kidding. Or whose career they're going to ruin. Just kidding. I'm kidding. I love these two. They're my favorite people. Please welcome David Yontoff and Jess Rothschild. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Yep, that's for you, honey. Save the best for last, You guys want to stay in front? Yes, yeah, stay We're going to stand. Stand. I like standing. You can stand. You can sit. Whatever you like. Stand, what would you sit. like? I'm not going to bully you into sitting or standing. <laughs> uh, 
Listen, you could bully me into anything, Luann. <laughs> I knew you were going to say I'm that. I'm not into bullying, but if Luann wants to bully me, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> You're okay with that. Okay. By the way, it's the end of the show. Is anyone still listening? Does Is anyone still love attention? us? Everybody's still listening. They're all yes. still listening. Yes. Oh, hello, uh, hello, Shane. it's on. Shane? Oh. Yes, it Jess. is. <laughs> she goes, is that mic still on? I'm like, give it to Jess's me. Mic. <laughs> all right. It's on. Oh, okay. You're on, you're on, baby. You want to go first? You you go first. All right. So polite. So, yes. by the way, so I'm a gentleman. I know, I love that. And by you the way, we want to give a shout out to everybody, too, here. Part of Sampa Bullying is the LGBT community and raising awareness yes. and not discriminating yes. against sex, race, or gender. So these two are the queens and kings of it. So Jess, yeah, share the story. <laughs> We're the kings and You've queens. You've been knighted. Yes. Thank you, Chanel. Of course. I always knew I loved Chanel. <laughs> now you can wear these sunglasses oh. because you look at this. That look. Right, say you, you've been knighted. Do you guys care to hear our bullying stories, or, or do you want to just hear about what we're up to? Oh, you general. don't want to wear the sunglasses? Oh, okay, I'll share your bullying story. Share your bullying yeah. stories. Okay. I think we should just start first. Well, I grew up as uh, a gay teenager on Long Island, and I was completely obsessed with Madonna and Sandra Bernhardt. Woo! Oh, well. yes, Madonna. This is something we have Hello. in common, and a lot of people judged me for it, or they thought it was weird. I had this weird fixation with Madonna growing up, and as I would realize later on, I was really just looking for somebody who embodied this kind of magic quality of being an artist, a dancer, a performer, who somebody who had this magnetic quality, who was so unapologetic about who they were. And... Like the Countess. No, like Madonna. Yeah. She's like, a Madonna. Yes, Plus. exactly. Right? A mentor. And the Countess uh, Madonna. We love them all. <laughs> yeah. We love them both. I was completely obsessed with pop culture. Um, I remember, like, defending showgirls to my family at Thanksgiving which people thought was super weird. And uh, years later, um, I went to a live podcast taping of Sandra Bernhard. She was being interviewed, and I recognized this thing standing just a few feet away from me. Recognized off the internet. He seemed familiar to me. So I continued my love of Madonna. She was a fan. She was a fan. I was not a, was fan. a fan. I was not a fan. Remains to be seen if I'm still a fan. And I continued my love of Madonna and Sandra Bernhard for 20 odd years. And there I was at this live podcast taping for Sandy. And I went up to him. She said, I recognize you and I want to be your friend. And I said, I love you dearly. Let's be friends. And then we started a podcast together. That's a beautiful story. Isn't that a it, nice story? It's magical. That, that, is, that is how we met. Yeah. And we actually did share this love of Madonna together. It's like, it was one of the first things that we really bonded on. You bonded That's over true. Madonna. Yes. Yes. Got Literally. It. A lot of people. The second over thing Madonna. that we really bonded on was the fact that we had had a crazy number of run ins with these pop culture icons like the Countess. Yeah. Woo! Yes. And some other people who are in this room right now. Look, these people have Countess and French shirts. <laughs> like, that's, that's like the legitimate merchandise right so there. So that was the genesis of the podcast. We're sharing these stories and making people feel We kind of took it on steroids. Yeah. And we've ruined some careers. <laughs> but overall, it's going yeah. well. But it's for the good. Yes. And let's give a shout out to all of Jess and David's friends who are here tonight supporting us too because of Out in the Wild Tony podcast. In the background. So what is my bullying story? So listen, I have two. So today when I was like preparing my stories with Luann and Chanel, they said keep it to one story. I'm going to tell two stories very quickly. One story is like, listen, in like I grew up in Connecticut, like down the street from you, you know, I'm a woman of a certain age, so it was a different time. I wasn't out, you know, and like I was like beat the, sh I, I got the shit beat out of me in high school. Like people beat the shit out of me, shoved me in lockers. Like, so I had a girlfriend, believe it or not, I had a girlfriend. <gasps> Countess, Dave, are you, you shocked? Girl, I know. Shocking. I so get I had it. 
I know, isn't that amazing? So I had a girlfriend in high school, and like I remember being in like algebra class, and someone wrote like gay across like my my white shirt, and she was like, "Why is someone writing that you're gay?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm gay. I mean, hello. Like, I mean, it's Connecticut, but I was still gay. So like, I was bullied in high school, but you know what? My thing is, you just have to overcome. So like, I never." went like dark. I never went dark. I'm just like, I'll amount to something better. And then I grew up and I became successful and blah, blah, blah. And then like recently, so I, you know, we're all like, I want to talk about cyberbullying because I, you know, we all have a presence on Instagram and Facebook and all those other things, Jess, you know, and like you get all those comments all day online. And you know, like people say so much shit about me. Well, here's the thing. So, like, my Instagram presence, because of our podcast, the genesis of our podcast is appreciating all things pop culture, like Countess and Friends. Woo! See? You have the, and other things. So, like, people will say to me, like, you're pathetic, you have no life, why are you going to, like, a 30th Countess show? And I'm just like, <laughs> He's right, been to 30 of right. my shows. David, you've been to 30 of my shows? Yes. I cannot believe Oh, I and by it. the way. Yeah. I mean, I hate to have, like, a real moment here. I'm coming to Ridgefield, Connecticut, Atlantic City. Oh, Everyone, my God, that's my own new Christmas show. You're yes. going to see a new Christmas show. Yeah. Oh, She's coming with me. Awesome. Wellmont, New Jersey. Like, this oh, is my like, God, I love listen, it. Listen, Countess is like, let's invite David and Jess because we're giving her a shout-out. But there's a whole group of shows coming up. And so people are like, you're pathetic. Why do you have no life? I'm like, this is the jackpot. Like, who does... It's no life, like, we're going to all these shows, and so, like, cyberbullying, so I get, like, cyberbullied online, and they say I have no life, and blah, 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 but, you know, my whole thing is, like, just know who you are inside, and, like, just don't let that shit affect you, like, even in high school when I was young, you just don't let that shit affect you, but you have to feel for these people today that, I don't know, like, people, it, like, affects people, right? Oh, yeah, yes. people can be awful hiding behind their Instagrams and their Twitters yeah. and all of that. It's, it's, Could you, know. you imagine being a child today? No, with no. social media. No, I can't. It's Could you? just so difficult. No, I don't know why people have children, period. I don't know why people have children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it yeah. is important, and that's what Stomp Out is also about, is the right. cyberbullying and bringing awareness that it's not cool to just hide behind a computer and bully someone just because well, you're hiding yeah. behind a computer. Well, the thing is, like, if someone's bullying you online, it's more about them and their own insecurities That's than right. you. That's right. That's right. That's true. But, like, Good when point. you're, like, 16 or That's 17, you don't realize that. So just, I don't know, just rise above, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, See? I think you're not alone, my darling. Thank you. I think this room could tell you, each and yes. every one of them could tell you a bullying story. Right, people? Woo! Everybody's been bullied in this room. So you're not alone. We're raising awareness for bullying. Yeah. So Thank you guys so much. Uh, please follow Jess and you. David. We love you. At Out in the Wild Podcast, all over social media. Guys, we are going to wrap it up. Thank Thanks you guys. so much for everything. We want to say all thank for you. Coming thank out you tonight. guys. By the way, you. our girl Kim Sands is walking around. She's collecting some more donations. Thank you, Kim, for and helping us. And come and us. say hello from the ladies from the social, the Fortune Society, Society. my girls Woo! over here, shouting out my girls. And uh, thank you all for coming, and we love you. Have a good and night. And we have an after party, so meet us downstairs because oh, yeah, we're about to party. party. Oh, where's the music? Where's the music? Oh! To hold the door when I give them so much more than they can imagine. Money rich and manners poor. Never got the boys too far. Money talks, but I just walk when I can't stand it. And the primary mistake texting on a date. If you make a lady wait, she'll take a pass. The lesson all should learn, even if there's cash to burn. Respect yourself, cause no one else can change your path. Money can
forget to allow the men you've met to exemplify their very best behavior. When entering a room, greet everyone and soon you'll be invited and entitled to the grandeur. Your company should feel when a conversation's real, even if the topic feels like science class. You can tell where someone's been without even asking him. He's either rude or has some style and panache. Money can't buy your class. Money can't buy your class. Elegance is learned, my friends. Elegance is learned, oh yeah. Money can't buy your class. Money can't buy your class. Elegance is learned, my friends. Elegance is learned, oh yeah. All right, guys, thank you guys. Let's give it up one more time for the Countess. Thank you guys for coming and the party is continuing downstairs.